Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. I'm not even going to say actor. He's he's a race car driver. He's a truck driver, <laughs> right? Like, should we just do it that way now? It's Frankie M- Muniz. Yes. I, I mean, I, I've, I've been fortunate to do a, a lot of different things in my life, but but my my main focus is racing. Like, yeah. that's, you know, I, I'm fortunate enough to get to kind of look back at my life and, and think of the things I've gotten to do in the past and where I really want to focus my future. And that's where I feel the most at home. But there's also a weird element I, I, we were just talking about, I, had, I have a 15 month old son and I feel like most people when they have a kid slow down yeah. and want to do less dangerous things. Yeah. Me, it was more, I wanted him to be able to watch me going after, like grow up with me going after my dream. Right. You know what I mean? And the passion and the hard work and, and rather than me just sitting at home, you know, or being some lame actor. I'm yeah, like, no, yeah. no, I gotta, I gotta work for well, this. I want you to, you know. I think you're not a lame actor, but is that so... Obviously, you know, it's great to have you in here. The people will know you as an actor, but are you hoping that someday you're known more as a race car driver or truck driver? It's truck, right? Well, uh, w- yeah, let's, let's back up. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, motorsports in general, I, I started racing in 2005. Um, uh, I was doing open wheel stuff like uh, IndyCar, Formula One. Um, I raced in Champ Car Atlantics. I got really badly hurt in 2009. I broke my back pins put in my hand broken ankle broken everything um and always thought i'd go back racing i always knew i had in my mind unfinished business but the injuries took a pretty long time to heal so i missed the next season and then life takes over right i mean i i I joined a band i was was on tour um and always said i'd go back racing but the years just keep passing by i'm 36 i'm not getting any younger it's a young man's sport if i'm gonna do it i want to do it and i want i want to I want to be able to look back and go, you know what? I accomplished what I was going, af- you know, right. going after. Yeah. And uh, and I felt like this was what I want to do. I, Like I said, I raced open wheel stuff. I love the idea of racing in, in NASCAR. Um, so this, I love that idea for you. Yes, <laughs> I want that yes, to happen you for you. <laughs> yes, let's so, do that. So this past, this past uh, couple months, I've been uh, doing a lot of stock car stuff, pro late models with the, with the intention, yes, that I, I want to race trucks. I want to race in the Xfinity Series, ARCA, NASCAR. But I'm, I'm kind of – I'm saying motorsports in general because uh, – I, I just want to race cars. Yeah, mm-hmm. I want to be a race car driver. Yeah, you know, I want to go. I want to go fast. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Awesome. What's the fastest you've ever been? Uh probably two oh five. Damn. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny. The the tracks that you go really like the really high speed tracks actually f- don't feel as fast as some of the the smaller tracks. Like I'll be going hundred miles an hour. You're on the limit. That's when you feel like you're going fast. You, right. you, know, you have the car sideways. So you you know it. It's not just about like that top speed, but. Yeah, I, I did the ARCA test at Daytona at the beginning of this year. You know, you're going 190, 200 miles an hour, but it doesn't, you, you, you want to go faster. Like right. The, uh-huh. you know, it's just a big, big so place. Big. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, that's crazy. It's all relative. Is, uh, is speed addictive? You know what's funny? I feel like once I became a race car driver, I became, I actually go a lot slow, like in my, in real life, mm-hmm. like in the in my cars, I don't want a sports car anymore i ride motorcycles but like i've gone from having super sport bikes to like cruisers because like there's nothing like the speed of being in a race car or like driving on the limit with other people in the street i'm just gonna get in trouble you know what i mean but i don't know if if speed is necessarily addictive as much as the competitive like i'm super competitive i want to win i want to beat you you know what i mean and i think that's more addictive you know what i mean like the the working hard and, going and seeing faster those results. than the other guy right yeah going faster than the other guy better yeah. than just like going fast if we're racing smart cars you know what i mean uh-huh. and going 50 miles an hour like i just want to beat you that's that's what is addictive not right, necessarily yeah. the just going fast it, cool. it, your career is crazy because you know we're, we're the same age as you so we remember malcolm in the middle we mm-hmm. remember watching it i think there's a, a preconceived notion with child actors where it's like oh a child actor like that's got to suck when they grow up <laughs> and i love I, but i love you can tell me i'm way off i love that you are very open with no my life is pretty sweet i get to do everything yeah. i want to do <laughs> well i i know there's most child actors yes do have a ginormous decline right me i've always just as cheesy as it sounds i've gone after my dreams like i and I look back and I go, I'm lucky. Right. You know what I mean? A lot of people look and they go, oh, like, ugh. I know so many actors 
child actors or even adult actors who for some reason they get on these tv shows they have all this success but they're miserable right and they want i want off the show i want to do movie it's like you don't understand how lucky you are and you have it because it's going to end eventually it's going to end so me i went from acting i wanted to go into racing i wanted to push it 100 percent. so i kind of left the acting world did that i got to do the band i've owned a bunch of businesses i've been fortunate to do everything i've wanted to do and i and I, I know I'm lucky, you know what I mean? Right. But in that same sense, I've always felt like I was running out of time. So I, I a lot of my passion and me going after all these things is I want to live the most fulfilled life I can, you know what I mean? For me, you know, I want right. to look back and go like, man, I didn't waste any time. Like I got to do everything I ever dreamt of. And, and uh, you know, I, Hopefully, in doing those things, I'm 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 being the best I can be. I, I'm doing the best I can be with them. I'm not doing this stuff as a hobby. Like I, I don't want to be a race car driver just because it's fun. I want to do it because I I want to I want to be the best. I want right. to win a championship. I, right. you know, I want to win races, and I want to be remembered as a great race car driver as well as a great actor or, mm-hmm. or whatever. I, I'm not ashamed of anything I've done in the past. You right. Know? That, um, that well, maybe does, a few things. Well, that but. does have to be a weird feeling too. I, I you know, mm. it it's got to be bizarre to be able to watch back you're acting and like like that's when i was growing up and like my formative years and it's all on display it's not <laughs> obviously it's scripted so it's not reality yeah. television but still like to look back and be like whoa that's like i can't imagine the, the mind fuck if any of us were able to look back <laughs> yeah. and see like us grow up on screen yeah. it's got to be a little weird it, it is you know it's uh, uh, people ask me all the time they go you know, are you sad that you didn't get to go to high school prom or these things? And I, I was like, well, no, I got so many incredible opportunities. And, you know, I was at the Academy Awards. Right. You know, I was at the right. Emmys. You know, I was uh, at the Playboy Mansion when I was 15. You know, that's pretty <laughs> sick. Way cooler than prom. Yeah. Trust me. Yes. Um, yes. So. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. You know, it was. It was That's like of, when Playboy was like. <laughs> oh, no, no, it, it was when it was Playboy. legit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that is all you, you could have just said that. <laughs> not yeah. Not this like, word no problem, search no, bullshit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Play, Playboy mentioned it. You got to hang out the grotto yeah. all, all the time. Um, <laughs> so you know, I I look back and I go like, no, I was completely lucky. I don't take it for granted. You know what I mean? Um, but. But no, I don't. Sorry. There's no. Yeah. You touched on something real quick. That was uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. I think a lot of people in Hollywood, especially um, are just they don't know how to be happy. And, right. Yeah. And just because they're being successful at whatever show is on, if they're, you know, at the top of the A-list, if they're getting invited to all the good parties, they're still not really happy. They're just I, like, I don't know what that is. I like I've thought about it a lot because I like I have it took me, I think, stepping away to you know, because when you're in it, like, it's just your life, right? Like, when you're filming a show you, every day, it, it's just what you do. You know what I mean? And and maybe you don't take it all in at that time because you think, oh, yeah, yeah, this is what I do. This is what I do. I go to these shows. I go to this premiere. I have to fly here. I have to do that. And it just becomes what you do, right? But it took me, when I stepped away, I look back and I go, wow, that was awesome. And if I ever have an opportunity again or w- whatever I'm doing – I'm going to take full advantage of that and know that like, this is a great experience. I want people to leave who I work with who go, man, he's a great guy. He puts a hundred percent effort. You know, I, I never complain. I don't want to go home. You know, like I, that's how I want to be remembered. You right. Know what I mean, and, but I feel like it took leaving to see that. I think that's right. a, that's a you know healthy I mean? perspective to have too. Yeah. And if you're in it for too long, then your entire self-worth gets based on what other people are saying about you. Yeah. And well, then I think, the second they turn on you, it's like it, it crushes you. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of child actors end up going down a bad path is you're also so used to your life being like everybody, you know, giving you whatever you want or doing whatever you want. And there's the, like a, there's like the endorphins are a high that come with that. And then it goes away mm-hmm. and they need something to fill that void and they you know. Cocaine. It, well, cocaine. It, yeah, 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 yeah. It's cocaine. That fills void. No, but it's. I think it's also like the the pressure the the public puts on child actors, where it's like if they don't become adult actors, it's always like what happened to that person? Yeah, and it's like what happened to Frankie Muniz? Well, he's living an awesome life and he's going after all his goals, yeah. and that doesn't compute to a lot of people. I never people. I remember being you know, 17, 18, 19, I was on Malcolm still. And everyone would always be like, you know, how are you going to make that transition to adult actor? And, and my answer used to be like, well, 
when I turn 18, I'm legally an adult. If I'm still acting, I'm an adult act. Like, I don't know. I don't know. There's no like science behind it. Right. right. But in that same sense, I, I never let that change decisions I made or, or affect decisions or things that I, I wanted to do or was like, well, I have to make sure I make the right decision to get me to be an adult actor. If it works out, it does. I think one weird thing for me is I was in the height of my acting career, like on the show, and I decided to like say, hey, I'm not going to do any more. I want to go race. I want to do this. I want to focus right. on this. I want to, you know, if I'm going to do something, I want to do it 100%. And I don't know if a lot of people know that. You know what I mean? Right. So maybe in some eyes they think that I I failed as an actor or I didn't make it. You know what I mean? But right. But in the end, like, I know I'm happy with the decisions I made. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I can't help but think that at times where I go, like, what if I did stay? Like, where would I be or what would have happened? Right. You know what I mean? Um, but I think me as a person, the best thing I could have done is what I did. I right. I think it's I mean? a healthier choice that you made, like a, yeah. a, a much, much better for your mental health to do something like that than to like be wrapped up in something that you might not have as like a long term goal. Then you're just like fighting, trying to be happy. Yeah. Right. You know, you're always fighting against the possibility of, of being upset. But I guess you uh, the only career decision I would say that I would vehemently disagree with is becoming a Clippers fan. <laughs> yeah. Because you are the only Clippers fan well, in the world. Penny Marshall's passed away. So, and Billy Crystal, right? I think, is maybe Yeah, the but only he only other. goes to the big games. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah, not a real one. You are the world's Jimmy only Tatro, Clippers fan. Jimmy Tatro, huge Clippers fan. Our friend Jimmy Tatro. Yeah. Well, see, enormous Clippers fan. I... I became a Clippers fan because I played like NBA Live 94 on Super Nintendo or whatever it was. And the Clippers were the only team that I didn't mind deleting all the players because I didn't know who any of them were. <laughs> and I, it was like I put myself, my dad, and of course yeah. I was 99 everything. My uh -huh. cat was a player. You know what I mean? Like, so, I, so then I was like, well, I'm going to be a Clippers fan. Right? I grew up in New Jersey. Is that really, that's really the story? How that's really the story. amazing. That's awesome. And so... I, I take it back. I'm glad you're a Clippers fan. So then story. in 97 or whatever was like the first time I went to LA. Like I went to a Clippers game at the sports arena and there was like seven people there. And I don't know. I just, I loved, I loved it. Like I loved, even though they didn't win often, I loved having a team that I supported and, and uh, you know, but I spend a lot of money going to games to be miserable. Yep. And I, that's one of the things I, I look back and I go like, wow, I literally paid money to be yeah. angry. Yeah. Every that's day. That's sports fandom, though. Yeah, like, that's every – like, there's only one winner every year. I'm yeah. a Washington yeah. Commanders fan. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but you did yours by choice, though. Yeah. That's the difference. Like, <laughs> yeah. I just kind of had to be because I grew up around it. You're yeah. like, you know what? Yeah, the Clippers, that seems, seems like a good investment. Though, if you saw time. the – I have in storage bins of like – Everything that I could find, because you rarely could find Clippers stuff. Right. Like if you go, you know, you go to sports stores, nobody had Clippers stuff because nobody bought it. But if I found it, I bought everything. I have every Clippers item I could ever find for like 20 years. <laughs> so whose side did you take in the Chris Paul Blake Griffin saga? <laughs> um, Answer carefully. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, one of them's I, a friend I don't of ours. Be, well, both of them are friends of mine. Okay, <laughs> but one who's a no, better a guy? Side. Who's a better guy? I don't know. Be careful. See, I don't want to be put on a spy. Like, I, I don't, just be honest. Yeah, but be careful. So one A, one B. Be careful. I was a big Blake Griffin. Right, yeah, there we right, go. Good okay. answer. Uh, good choice. Good job, Frankie. <laughs> I live in Phoenix now, though. You know what I mean? So, like, uh -huh. I, I, I'm not a, necessarily a Suns fan, but I, I root for the city. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I want, you know, and obviously, you know, Chris, Chris Paul's Paul, done yeah. great with the, with the Suns. Oh, has uh, he? I guess. Well, I, like, seating-wise. I mean, yeah. Well, yeah. I really yeah. want anything <laughs> of note. Yeah. Well, better than the Clippers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are, you got to be excited about this year, though, right? Like, John Wall, this is the year, right? Kawhi may be coming back. Maybe. I've said this is the year every year since 1994. You know, <laughs> yeah. so I, I don't know. You know, like, you know, to be honest, I'm, I'm going to be 100% front with you, with you guys. I have not watched a basketball game in maybe three years. Oh wow! So uh, to be honest, mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just being. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what happened because like it was literally my life. Like all I cared about was the Clippers and well, basketball. Yeah, and I don't know. I just, you were a Clippers fan. That's yeah. probably the answer. That probably. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like why you know, don't I like this? Well, they anymore. became like super trendy too. Yeah. Like, they kind of became like cool. That's yeah. not as cool to be a Clipper fan. When they traded away Blake Griffin. Yeah, you stopped watching basketball. That's loyalty right there. I respect that. Yes, yeah, that, that's I love it. that. That's it. 100%. Um, well, the other thing I I was wondering your your Twitter is is very funny. Because I think it's well, just like you know, it'll pop up every now and then. You'll go viral. Um, <laughs> I do love the one. The one time I, I have this, uh, someone said, I don't even know if you remember this. 
Someone said, your acting is just awful. Sorry, but it is. And you replied, yeah, but being retired with $40 million at 19 <laughs> has not been awful. Good luck moving out of your mom's house before you're 35. <laughs> I just love that. Look, sometimes you, you know, people, the internet is filled with hate, yep. right? And people sling mud because they can. Yep. And I never, res but every once in a while you have to punch back. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You got to so, slap some people around. Like, just you know let what? them know. You know what? You're right. Yeah. Yes. My acting is awful, <laughs> but you know what's not? <laughs> So, I don't know. Sometimes I, I just had to punch back. Yeah. Well, is it objectively yeah. awful if you're getting paid for it? Somebody thinks it's good, right? Well, look, I, I've, never, I've never claimed to be a good actor, right? I've, yes, I was an actor. Mm -hmm. I did what they told me to do. I said what they said, told me to say. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. You know what I mean? But... Yeah. You, you, sure. you have, yeah, right. And the, the other one I wanted to read to you that's very <laughs> funny is you, you said... Uh, you know when you look in the mirror and realize you'll never be as good looking as Zac Efron and you'll always be Frankie Muniz looking motherfucker? Imagine being Frankie Muniz. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I know where I stand. Right. You know, I was never, I, was, I wasn't a heartthrob. I was, I was not in a lot of teen beat magazines. You know, mm -hmm. I, uh, I was a funny, awkward kid and it worked for, for Malcolm in the Middle. Yes, yeah. yes. I, I've got a couple more examples here. This, is, uh -oh. this one's a little darker. Maybe you can explain this one. I have about four dreams a week that I get shot in. Last night, I could actually feel the burn of bullets as they entered my chest and heart. Do you still like constantly dream about getting shot? I do actually. Um, I don't. I don't. I'm not like a dream person, right? Where like some someone I'm sure can tell me that that means something is haunting me in my life or whatever it may be. But honestly, like I have those dreams all the time, and they're awful. That sounds yeah. It sounds terrible. Yeah, like yeah. four times a week. L do you have any enemies? I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that, uh, apparently, I would be afraid to fall asleep if I were you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's it, it's weird. I honestly like I I I wake up all the time with that like the feeling of just like oh good thank thank goodness I woke up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you might just have sleep apnea. Maybe. That's I've, yeah. I've always heard that like if you if you experience something painful in your sleep you can just write it off to sleep apnea. Uh, and yeah. Like, Go get a mask and then you stop dreaming about that yeah. weird stuff. Maybe I on it I I really truly feel like I know what it feels like to be shot. That's crazy. I mean, I don't shoot me. I don't <laughs> yeah. want to like find you out. You already know. Yeah. yeah. But like <laughs> Wait, that's bad. that's nuts. Yeah. What uh you, you also, I mean, your your career has been fascinating. You you're in the olive oil business? Yeah. Uh, still? Not any, it, not anymore. We we sold the company. Okay, cuz um, I was going to say, did you just do that so people could be like he might be in the mafia? Cuz that's like <laughs> that's yeah. all you hear like olive oil business. What what made you do that? To to be honest, my wife um we were looking at businesses that she that she could be have or or do and we randomly had gone to this olive oil company and they were like it's for sale and i was like i'll buy it <laughs> okay <laughs> another one of those on a whim like I, I i i knew i loved business i wanted to be involved like i love kind of the behind the scenes um aspect of, of businesses and it was something that she was passionate about and we did it and then it ended up becoming like a huge passion of mine like I, I loved uh um everything about the business and and olive oil and the, and the benefits and the science behind it and we sourced from 14 different countries um we got everything tested by a third party to make sure it was the highest rated olive oil the freshest in the in the country and we became one of the biggest olive oil companies in the u.s and you quickly. sold it for a profit so oh yeah that's crazy i mean it we it, it's one of those things we look back at now we go like that was pretty cool but like in it it was way more work than you could imagine right you know yeah. what i mean like it was it was definitely it's not an easy business like, right it's very time consuming and and uh she had gotten pregnant and uh a couple came up to us and they were like we we love your business like would you ever want to sell it and i i said a, a stupid number and it was there as a week later <laughs> that's you know? amazing that's great. so i, I mean I, we do miss it you know we miss having a business um but at the same time, like we had the baby, and, and now you, know, you can go buy another business exactly. if you want. Yeah. So, so at the time when you were selling olive oil, did people know like this was your olive oil company? I mean, I I was there pretty much every day. We had a, we had a storefront, um, and there were times where people would be like, "Why are you here? Like, why are you? Oh, oh, you're selling olive oil now." I'm like, "Yeah, but I I mean, it's my I own it. It's um, fun. <laughs> yeah, and and I and I enjoyed it. Like." It was one of those things that, like, that was what I wanted to focus on, and and I wanted us to be as big as we could, and we worked really, really hard at it, and that's just kind of what I've I try to do with everything I do, and yeah, you know, especially 
especially now with, with motorsports. Again. This is this is great because I like you really do have a fascinating career. I also there's like. A moment in time that some of our listeners probably won't realize, but like like I said, we're the same age as you. You were on the first ever episode of Punked. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Like this is like this is this is shit that should be remembered forever because Punked was a huge, huge, huge cultural yeah. phenomenon. You were it was, you know at the na- nadir of your like acting. So what what do you, he what they do? What, how were you Punked? I I did a movie with a Sean Levy, um, who now created and directs Stranger Things and all that. And Ashton had did a, mo- a movie with him as well. And, and they called and said, we want to pitch you a, an idea for a movie. So I met them at the Standard Hotel. And I had a h- big car collection then. And uh, I think they were assuming I was going to drive. There's, there's a big backstory behind it. But uh, anyway, I, I, I show up at the hotel and Dax, who wasn't Dax then, or right. I, I didn't know who Dax he was. just was. a guy. He right. was like he's Ashton's like, buddy. He's like, I'm Ashton's assistant. He's like, uh, the parking lot's full, park across the street. So I, he helps me get across the street, I park my car, go in, have the meeting with Ashton and Sean Levy, and and a bunch of, some weird things happen that they didn't show, like in the in the hotel, that I think that they thought I would like question, but it was LA. You know right. what I mean? I was like, oh yeah, weird you shit. Know, people yeah. are fighting, it's fine. Um, and I go out and my the valet said that Dax, wanted me to move his my car and he took it and like so it was a 1956 porsche speedster it was a very like a car i never drove and never parked but i was late and i don't know i don't know why i brought it um and i freaked out and i had left my phone in the car which worked great for the episode right because then i'm calling my phone dax answers right you know right. i'm like dude you're in my car you know it was this whole thing but that's but yeah. amazing yeah it was me and justin timberlake on the first the first episode yeah that's incredible i think all you have to do on that show is not like flip out and threaten to assault somebody and then everybody will love you yeah. i think it's it was like, i think it was the first time like i like said a bad word on tv you know what i mean i was like <laughs> i was like started cursing out the valet guy you know what yeah I mean? they're were, they were probably like that's awesome that's a yeah. perfect sound it's like frankie munia's being like you motherfucker it's yeah like, we got him <laughs> but then they they end up my car drives into the parking lot and ashton gets out and he's like you got punked and i'm like where's the asshole who stole my car you know yeah. i didn't even understand the, what yeah, they were talking about because punked wasn't a thing it wasn't it's a show like, <laughs> i'm like oh how'd you find God. it he's like you'll understand what that means in five years <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah wow <laughs> Yeah. That's perfect. That's so so funny. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool. like the like that was again. That, that's something people probably won't. Some people won't understand how big punk became. Oh, no, that and was how big you were yeah. and all of that coming together. That was a that was a huge huge show. Yeah, that's you incredible. and Justin Timberlake first punked. I, I do have a couple Malcolm in the Middle questions. Okay, just because like Big Cat said, we did grow up watching it. Yeah, um, and you've probably heard this one a million times. But Brian Cranston as as the father on the show. Yep. Pe- a lot of people don't realize that when Breaking Bad finished. He included like a spoof throwaway scene of like uh, in I think it was a DVD box set being yeah. like all of Breaking Bad was just a dream that I had on Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but but working with him as an actor, there's clearly always been something incredible about the way he goes about his business and like being on that show. Uh, he really helped to make that show. Was he was he like intimidating at all to work with, or how was that for you as like a young actor working with somebody that was so like great at their profession? You know how I said that I want people to work with me and have nothing but positive things to say. I learned that from Brian. Honestly, the most amazing human alive. You know what I mean? He showed up to work 100% professional. Put He'd be off camera. You know, some people throw away their lines. He did the same performance every time and just the nicest guy. So as far as me, like, you know, when we were on Malcolm, it was, he was Brian Cranston, but he wasn't, I think the Brian Cranston that right. Brian Cranston is now. Right. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm so happy for him, the success he's had since. I mean, Breaking Bad was insane, amazing. He's such a good actor. But uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say intimidating because he really became like a father figure to me. Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, he's still to this day, the show ended 16 years ago. He still calls all the time to check in. Brian Cranston calls me. That's cool. You know what I mean? That's very cool. Because he cares. And that's, I, I, I always remember that. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. I haven't talked to anyone else from the show. But, oh. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Print that. I'm kidding. <laughs> Fuck you do it. They don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Actually, I, that's the exact right answer that I wanted to hear. Yeah. No, he's like, so cool. You, you have an impression of people. You never know what they're like until yeah. you actually sit down and know them for a while. But he's always struck me as somebody that, like, everyone has positive things to say. Yeah. And working with him closely at that time, must have been, it must have been really interesting to see him, like, because that's the role that I think took him from being, you know, like a, 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 a kind of mid name yeah. for uh, TV actors, and it like elevated him because on a show that was kind of it was sitcommy, but it was you know single camera, it was a little bit different. Uh, but it took him and elevate him to really like the top tier of television actors, which just launched him into a different stratosphere. Yeah, what's funny is they, when we did the pilot, they didn't have him cast until the day we started filming. Like it was it, like they couldn't find, and they're like, oh, I guess it'll work. And then they were gonna write that character kind of out of the show, mm -hmm. but Brian was so good, you know what I mean? I watch, I rewatched all the because I'd never seen him when they aired. I rewatched all the episodes with my wife a few years ago, and to me, Brian made that show, like his comedy and and like he was so good. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, the first time we ever met him, we were literally on set, ready to film the first scene, and it was the scene where um, our mom is shaving him at the kitchen table of the first episode and he comes on set and he had like a skin toned speedo on and he's all covered in hair. He's like, Hey, I'm Brian. I'm going to be your dad. You know? <laughs> and he's just the coolest guy. Like, you know, and so it's, it's weird to think that if any actor on the show on, on most shows were, if he didn't get cast, mm -hmm. it would have, the show would have been completely different. Like, yeah. I don't, maybe it wouldn't have been nearly as successful or, or, or not. And, then you wouldn't have had, if you think the the domino effect, there would have been no Breaking Bad. There would have been no, you know, like, yeah. man, Better yeah. Saul. we're so lucky. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you just watched the the series all the way through a couple of years ago for the first time? Yeah, yeah. What was that like? You know, it's funny because I don't, how do I put this? I don't. I could watch it as a as like a spectator, as a fan. Like I didn't I didn't see it as me. You know what I mean? And then also we did so many episodes. I actually didn't remember what most what happens in most of the episodes, so I could actually watch it. But it definitely changed my perspective of what the show was. Like I like the comedy even when we were filming it or we were doing it. I imagined that the show was different than it actually ended up being. You know what I mean? And there were characters that when I was filming, I was like, "This is stupid." That actually were my favorite. They ended up becoming some of my favorite moments when I rewatched the show. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But uh. I, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed it you know I there's been a lot of I don't know speculation about like my memory and a lot of it has to do with the fact that I feel like I did so much like so many episodes so many things and, and you just kind of do it you, you know you film and but I think the biggest thing for me is I don't distinguish there's three things things that I dreamt I go like did that happen because I've, I've had so many crazy dreamlike things happen in reality but then also like most of my life and most of my childhood, I was pretending to be someone else. You know what I right. mean? And like doing things that I had to do that weren't really me. You know, so right. there's an element of like... Yeah, you were Malcolm, right. Yeah, you I, know. I also think like, if, you're, if you're a performer, if you're doing... Like, for example, we do this show. We've done it three days a week for the last six years. Mm -hmm. I don't remember much. Like, 30 minutes after the show, I don't <laughs> yeah. really remember what I said. Yeah. And sometimes it takes people to like remind us the next day and they like send us a quote that we said on the show. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. That was great. But like you don't you don't necessarily absorb all the stuff as yeah. you're doing it. My memory of Malcolm or filming Malcolm is what I've now seen on camera. Right. right. Because that's the last, you know, like I, I see that. Or, you know, my my memory of most of my life comes from like seeing pictures. So I, I see it almost from the outside. I don't necessarily, I, I don't know what that is. If it was that you just do so much or you, you talk so much or you, you know, you do so many shows that they all kind of co come together yeah. or you get used to kind of being in the moment and doing it and then, you know, go on to the next part of your life. Um, but, but yeah, I don't know. What, what, what did happen? With, I know you mentioned your health. Like there was a moment there where I think I remember reading it was like amnesia or something. You had concussions. Yeah, I, I've had nine concussions, um, which is not great. You yeah. Know what I mean? um, Are those all car crashes? No, a lot. I played football and basketball. I played every sport when I was right. growing up and you know, always fell and hit my head. Um, right. uh, I'm really close to the ground, so it's <laughs> easy to hit my head on the ground. Um, no, so there's that. And then I was... And this only recently figured out wrongfully diagnosed with having 
TIAs, like tr- uh, mini strokes, okay. like uh, transient ischemic attacks. I was having these episodes where like I lose my vision, I couldn't recognize faces, couldn't talk, like all this kind of stuff, and it was happening pretty, pretty regularly. And um, I was told that I was having mini strokes or TIAs, which is a pretty big deal. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, only to find out after doing like c- continuing to go because they would do all these tests and none of the things that should have shown up were showing up, but they were still kind of saying, yeah, it's this, it's this, this, this. Finally, I had a doctor really kind of look into it and it ends up I was just having aura migraines, huh? which still like sucks. Yeah. Like, it's still awful to have those episodes. But part of the the story of, of how it kind of spread, you know, I did Dancing with the Stars in, in 2017 and they have an episode where uh, it's the most me- most memorable year episode. And they told me that my most memorable year was 2001. <laughs> they and told I, you it. And I go, I don't, I don't really have anything to talk. I don't really know what happened in 2000. Like, I don't know what to say. And they're like, why? And I go, I, I, and they're interviewing me. And the way it got cut together the, and the way they put it was that I have zero memory of anything. Uh-huh. And then press took it and it and now if you search my name it basically says i don't remember like like 50 first dates my wife has to wake up every morning and like tell me who she is and this (laughs) is your son and she plays a video yeah you know like no no i know i was malcolm you know i just right i did a lot of stuff you know i I don't i don't remember everything yeah i mean there's i i i oftentimes like have not memory issues but like there's definitely a lot of things that i don't like someone will remind me of something like oh yeah i I don't really remember that i was with my grandpa yesterday he's 95 years old you know what I mean? And he's like, do you remember? We went to that Papa John's. And I'm like, no. Yeah, right. My 95-year-old grandpa can remember, but yeah. I don't. You know but what it I was mean? memorable for him. It might yeah. not have been like that sticking point for you. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I I, like to now talk about it a little bit because now that I have a better understanding of, of what it is or what I think it is, you know, because um, people come up to me all the time and they're like, oh, do you, do you know who you are? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Your name is Frankie <laughs> Muniz. You were an actor. You're now trying to be a race car driver. You know that's um, nuts. But the uh, the oh aura migraine. Is there anything that you can do to like stop those or slow them I'm down? I'm trying least? to figure out now if there's something that triggers it. You know what I mean? Like, am I eating something? Right. You know what I mean? Or is it uh, high stress situations? I'm trying to figure that out now. But uh, I haven't had one in in a few years. Oh, good. Knock on wood. Yeah. Yep. So now, all right now. I yeah, can't yeah, see. Yeah. Um, You're allergic to it olive be, oil. It, yeah, yeah. it was. It so would be great for the show. Might have fixed it. Yeah. <laughs> it would be great for the show if you had one right now. I'm not saying Do you want a fake one? Yeah. yeah. Where am I? Yeah. I have uh, another uh, random thing I, I read that is kind of a sad one, but you met Dale Earnhardt right before he passed away, right? I did, yes. That's I, uh, nuts. I was at the 2001 Daytona 500 because Malcolm had premiered the year before. Um, I was the grand marshal. I drove the pace car and I was a big racing fan at that point. Um, and I got to go into the driver's meeting and as everyone was getting in the, in their cars, I was on the grid. Uh, Dale Earnhardt came up to me and he goes, I just have to say, he's like, you've brought me and my daughter so much closer your show. He's like, I love your show. I'm a huge fan. I'm like, oh, Dale Earnhardt. Yeah. And he signed my jacket and he got in his car so like other than his crew chief, essentially, I was the last person Holy to, fuck, to nice. talk to him. And we were in the M&M's car, Ken Schrader's pit, when the, and he's the car who crashed into Dale Earnhardt. And uh, my mom was hanging out with uh, the owner of um, uh, the track. And, and after the race, everyone was kind of worried, but nobody really knew anything. And I went to the hotel to watch the Clippers game. Mm-hmm. I ran, ran upstairs to watch the Clippers game, and it was like breaking news. They announced that he had died. And I remember I ran down to the lobby to tell my mom, and she was with the track owner and everything. They didn't even know. I broke the news to the whole bar. Holy fuck! And like, it was it was just a crazy, like super somber, uh, yeah, experience. That's insane. That is yeah. And and so that how, did, how that old were you? Uh, 15, 16, 15, yeah. And they let you drive the pace car. Yeah, it was a Pontiac Aztec. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they, that didn't deter you at all from wanting to be a race car driver. <sighs> I mean, obviously, you know there, there's there's danger in 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 racing. I, that I think that specific incident changed the racing world in a huge way to be a lot safer. They right. implemented the Hans device then um, after that, and like you know, obviously, you know, in the '60s, '70s, '80s, like people died 
you knew that two or three guys were not going to make it through the season. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's definitely become a lot safer. Granted, you're doing something dangerous. My thing is, you know, an air condition can fall out of a, you know, a window and crush me t- today. That's you know my I mean? biggest fear. Well, I, I, it really is. You really don't know. Right. You know, you know I, I know when I'm in the race car, I'm trying to go as fast as possible. And I'm not saying that you feel invincible. You know something can happen, but you can't think about that. Right. Like, if you're thinking about that or if, if there's fear in you, then you're – don't be a race car driver. You're right. not gonna. You're not gonna be fast. Yeah, you know? that's that, that. Like watching uh, F1, like the drivers survive when they're talking yeah. about having to be on the edge and yeah. just always be like pushing to that limit of you're you're basically almost crashing yeah. at all times. At all times. And if you, if any there's anything in you that's like ah, I don't want to get to that. Lim-. You, you just got passed. Yeah. You're you're done. Do you? That's do you, when you retire. Do you think uh, people getting into F1 right now just from the Netflix? Like we're very casual fans. Um, do you look down on it all? No, I think it's awesome. I mean, when I, cause I was racing open wheel cars 15 years ago and it was being in the U S nobody really understood what it was. Like, I would try to explain like, you know, IndyCar, formula one, they're like, is it NASCAR? You know, p- people mm-hmm. really knew that. So it's kind of cool that, you know, motorsports in general in the U S is growing. And I think, you know, more F1 fans will bring more IndyCar fans, which will bring more NASCAR fans, you know, cause yeah. once you get into the sport of racing, once you get into kind of watching it. You understand it more, and the, the the stories, and what drivers don't like each other, and that that's kind of what becomes yes. fun about it. You yeah. know what I mean? I think that's what what you know, Drive to Survive did so great for Formula One is it it showed people the personalities and what goes on behind the scenes, and you know, and and some of the drama. So when you watch on track, things that happen, it means more to you. Yeah, you know no, I mean? the fastest way to get fans is to show them rivalries, mm-hmm. and then also let them figure out what the goat debate is. Like, yeah, who's yeah. the goat? Yeah. So who's your goat of racing? Um, uh, and it could be any racing. I'm I I would say the the best series of drivers, in my opinion, and this might get me in trouble, is IndyCar. Okay. Because there's 24 guys, you know, who race every week, and all 24 of them could win. You know, where in Formula One, like it really is contingent upon what car you're in. Right. You know what I mean? You're seeing that with Hamilton. Like, uh, you know, he's won so many races, but his car is not good and he's an eighth place guy. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It doesn't mean that he's not a, as good of a driver as he was. Just the equipment mattered that much more. So I think, you know, to win in a series like IndyCar where like literally everybody's the a, a top driver and it, it really about your performance um, is is tough you and know who's the best of all time indy i mean scott dixon he's what six-time champion I mean, there's so many good guys i don't yeah. i don't know you know i i know andretti. i'm an andretti guy yeah yeah and allinger jr yeah i um uh, i raced with allinger jr um in a in a race and i out qualified him and that was the co- the coolest yeah oh wow thing in the world take him off my now. Yeah, yeah yeah i mean i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have to do to get you in nascar how how many steps away are you from competing i mean i i've been racing like i said i've been doing stuff to pr- to prepare because obviously you're racing nascar or racing uh, stock cars um although it's racing and i've been a race car driver it's like comparing Olymp- olympic diving and olympic swimming you know they both involve a pool but it, it, it they're very different you know what i mean like the the racing styles so i've been doing a lot of uh oval races and soccer races just to kind of to hone uh that craft um a, a lot of it has to do with sponsorship obviously you know what i mean um i i We've got to raise a lot of it's it costs a lot of money to go to go racing and and um so it's that's kind of what we're looking for and we'll see uh see yeah. where, where it, billionaires out there elon musk is a listener of the show so elon yeah if you want to sponsor frankie it's a small small yeah, drop in the yeah. You're finding your couch cushions yeah yeah you know, but you know i i i'm as a race car driver, I know that there's things that I, I, I need to do for, for companies and for things, and I'm, I'm willing to do all those things. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want to I be a race car driver. Like I said, I'm not doing it as a, as a fluke or, mm-hmm. or so whatever I've got to do to get in the car and, and uh, win races. Uh, I'm, I'm ready. That's awesome. All right, so I had one last question. It's a rowback question. Go to rowback.com. Put in code TAKE for 20% off your first purchase. R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. Q-Zips, hoodies, polos, everything. Rowback.com. All right, last question. True or false, you want to work at Barstool. Or you did at one point want to work at Barstool. <laughs> I, I I would love to. Um, you hit up Dave, didn't you? Is that did. how the story goes? No, we had, I don't know how we got connected, but I, 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 
I DM'd him and I was like, dude, like, let me work a bar stool. He's like, well, what would you do? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> That's <laughs> I mean, listen, drive the bar stool yeah. NASCAR. Yeah, yeah, obviously, no, yeah. the fact there's that a Dave, lot of people who've gotten jobs that way. Yeah. Well, the fact that Dave asked you like, what would you do here? That shows like way more planning than most hires. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. He was actually screening you harder than he screens yeah. anyone else. That was nice, very, nice. very yeah. tough. Yeah. No, I just I don't know. Like you guys seem like you have a lot of fun, and we I don't do. know. I, we I, do. Uh, Mm-hmm. I want to have fun. Yeah, I mean, you, you have a crazy like career history with everything you've tried. We should probably just add Barcel to it. Just, uh, hey, yeah. you know, I'm 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 still down. Let's so. get him okay. on the team. All right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, Frankie, this has been awesome. We appreciate it. Best of luck in the racing. Thank you and, so much. Uh, yeah, let's get you in NASCAR. I'd love it.